really breathtaking. Every time I experience it, it's different. You really feel in the middle of nowhere. You've got a beautiful view of Broken Hill and the Outback. It's a collection of incredible sculptures placed all over the hilltop. You really understand the immensity of the Outback once you are there. I never get tired of coming here. The rich morning light, the incredible details in the sculptures, the vibrant colors. It's a magical experience. Wigs, dresses, shoes. Christina loves sequin gowns. Tuesday afternoons is a little bit different. Chris goes from being Chris the worker to Christina Knees Up, the drag queen, which she performs Tuesday nights at the Palace Hotel for the Indian Pacific. As I sort of paint, Christina starts coming through. The very important step is when you place that wig on your head and then your whole character is there. I mean, Christina is just there. Once the wig's on, she's ready to go. We're in South Australia, in McLaren Vale, just south of Adelaide, maybe 45 minutes. So on one side to the west it has the sea, to the east and wrapping around it it has a range of hills around 400, 500 metres. And it produces wines that have got just natural extract and flavour. Corio was started around 69, I started working here in 1980 so it's my family business. The two sort of real handles that we have is Shiraz because we have very old Shiraz. And then we've been the main mover in Australia for new varieties. So now we bundle those up into a group called the New Australian Collection. The first Fiano in Australia, some of the first Nero, Barbera, Pickpool, just producing Sangiovese vineyard. And it's exciting because you're always learning new things. Virtually every vintage we have something new to discover. The great thing about working here at Darrenberg is we get to host experiences like this. It's quite unique, it's a hosted experience for Indian Pacific Platinum guests. They get to look at six wines in total, three whites, two reds and a Botrytis, which is a dessert wine. I take them through the history of Darrenberg and then we look at each wine, we smell, we taste and we go through the vintages and the stories behind the names. Darry's is a 105 year old family owned winery and so Chester is our chief winemaker, chief viticulturalist and current owner and he's responsible for the cube. It was actually his great grandfather that started Darrenberg back in 1912. Port Wollonga has been a part of my life for a very long time. I used to come here as a girl and so to now be back here in a restaurant just living a few moments away, it's such a special place. The Star of Greece is located on the cliff top of the Port Wollonga Beach, which is part of the beautiful McLaren Vale region. Guests from the Indian Pacific arrive here and many of them have got the cameras at the ready to watch the beautiful sunset that occurs right outside. It is one of the most beautiful picturesque beaches in Australia. We have created this fantastic dish just for guests of the Indian Pacific, utilising King George Whiting, which is synonymous with South Australia. We've accompanied that with some lovely local fresh produce just to make it something very, very special and unique to the region, but having just the most beautiful outlook you can imagine. I do arrive to work in a 1973 Volkswagen camper. 
it's a bit of an affliction slash addiction, which one thing once you drive a Volkswagen Combi, you won't want to drive anything else. My name's Craig Varney, I'm the winemaker at Murray Street Vineyards. So Murray Street Vineyards was established in 2001. We're a relatively new winery in Barossa history, but the focus is on small batch, handcrafted, intimate wines. Every day is different for me. One day I'm out having a look in the vineyard, or I might be in the barrel store pumping wines in and out. The next day I'm in the lab sampling wines and tasting and testing. So when people like to visit wine regions when traveling, they might visit Bordeaux, they might visit the Napa Valley. Australia's best wine region is the Barossa Valley. The Indian Pacific is a food and wine journey which enables the guests to step off board and taste what the Barossa Valley really has to offer. There's a few things that Indian Pacific people have to do when traveling to the Barossa Valley. Murray Street Vineyards for a tasting in the lovely scenic tasting room. Maggie Beers for, for some nice food. Sepulch Field for its history, nostalgia and Artisans of Barossa for its diverse wine tasting. The balance of wine and food and, and pairing, that's how lucky we are in the Barossa because we've got such great chefs, great restaurants, great produce, and also great grapes and great wine. I think it's a great thing that we get to showcase the Barossa to the Indian Pacific guests. It's eye-opening, it's an experience that they'll never forget. more of a cricket guy I think. I mean I can go and sit five days of a test match without any worries at all. My name's Trevor Manuel and I'm one of the tour guides here at Adelaide Oval. You can come in first thing in the morning there's no one here and it's all quiet and then you can come in when there's training on and there's lots of people around or you come in on match days and there's the noise and the buzz around that so it has its own character at all different times of the, the day, week or year. The scoreboard's the thing that people love to get into, love to see. It's still in its traditional format. It's 100 years old and it just suits the character of that end of Adelaide Oval. The character of Adelaide Oval is really about its history. The fact that it's got a lot of iconic events that have happened here. The West Indies winning by one run, the Bodyline Series, 1966 Grand Final when Sturt won the first of their five consecutive premierships. Coming on a tour of, of Adelaide Oval, seeing some of the history, some of the museums here, adds a really good package to their visit to Adelaide. I've been collecting minerals and rocks and fossils, you know, since I would have been eight or nine or something like that. My mum used to take me and a friend to a quarry in the school holidays with a packed lunch, and mum would just say, I'll come and pick you up at five o'clock. <laughs> I digress.
My name's Ben, and I run the Earth Sciences Collections here at the South Australian Museum. Australia is an amazing place, geologically and biologically. We're pivotal in our understanding of the biological and geological evolution of the planet and of the universe. The first thing that our Indian Pacific guests are going to see when they enter the South Australia Museum is actually the largest collection in the world of Aboriginal cultural artefacts. South Australia has produced over 80% of the world's precious opal. But more importantly, a lot of it is actually opalised fossils. Now these are the opalised replacement of remains of animals that lived in the sea 100 million years ago when the dinosaurs were around. The oldest complex animal life on the planet is found in the rocks of the Flinders Ranges and here they get to actually be hands-on and touch their oldest ancestors. There's also the South Australian Biodiversity Gallery where you'll see some of South Australia's iconic animals. Guests will then go down to the Foreign Mammals Gallery where they'll be met with canapes and some nice drinks. I see the world through a geologist's eyes. And so you'll hear from me about why the Nullarbor Plain is flat and why it exists where it is. And you're going to see some amazing things. You get to hold something four and a half billion years old. Samples of gold from mines mined a century ago. And most of all, bones from weird and wonderful animals that roamed the Nullarbor Plains tens of thousands of years ago. It really is the ultimate experience to enrich their journey across the Nullarbor. Well, I guess I sort of started falling in love with music when I picked up my first guitar at about 11 years old. As far as I know, I've been singing probably as early as I can remember. You know it's just your foolish pride, Layla. You got me. My name's Andrew Wishart, and I'm one of the very fortunate musicians who gets to sing and play on the Indian Pacific. The musicians and singers are on for a week which encompasses playing on a lot of different platforms and of course off-train experiences as well where you sing in some amazing places in the middle of Australia. Well, I remember my first uh, trip on the Indian Pacific I sort of woke up with bated breath because I'd never crossed the Nullarbor and I remember rolling up the blinds and just sitting there for 15 minutes just blown away by the sheer amount of space. Can't start a fire Can't start a fire without a spark This gun's for high one of the stops across the Nullarbor is a little town called Cook. You know, when you get off and do a stop in the middle of the Nullarbor, it's so quiet. It's just nothing. Yeah. And hot, <laughs> usually. The, dark night. The, the stop at Raw Linna, which is literally in the middle of nowhere, and it's you know, a massive sheep station, and the train stops there, and they get the experience of stepping off the train, and the first thing they see is a row of bonfires and they see um, all these trestle tables with hors d'oeuvres and entrees and, and uh, you know, the bar set up and then of course myself with the PA and the music set up to sing for them and you can see that it would be in such a remote area and such a quiet area and everyone's in such a happy, joyous mood. It's something that's uh, quite hard to encapsulate. Like you've got to sort of be there to feel it. I guess one thing that is blatantly obvious is that music seems to be the glue or the gel which binds everyone together. Anything from the 60s and 70s works really well. Can you ever go past Sweet Caroline? Everyone in unison just goes ba ba ba. Everybody! Sweet Caroline. I guess being on the Indian Pacific is all about the experience of a lifetime and I think having music and live singing on the train just adds to the experience. A good sports, a good sport. Information operations are you receiving? Receiving. You can overstand clear on the north end of platform one for train movement. North end of platform one. The train has its own personality, its own feel. And when it passes the Adelaide Jail, it's got a different sound different noise, a different groan. It knows it's coming home. In the middle of Australia, pitch black, night sky, stars out, camels, and you walk around the corner and every guest that goes there is just in awe. 
perfect. Anything you touch on the train is heavy. The train that just left here is 901 metres and 1,759 tonne. It's not a job. It does get into your blood. Being away from home can be hard, but being on the train, they're your family. Like, I travel with the same people and they're my train family. And just the fact that you got to go off and do these tours, something different, it adds something more to talk about. It's just, I don't know, I love it. Each night when I go to bed, I'll make sure my window's open so I can fall asleep to the stars. It's beautiful, it's, it's nothing that you'll see in the city. They finish the people moving task on platform two. Yeah, that's affirmative. So I'm up at half past five to allow myself a little bit more time because usually on the gown I'm working at one end of the train and I sleep at the other. That's good, you, you can get to work in five minutes, you don't have to worry about peak hour traffic in the car or anything like that. So in, in a normal restaurant I can't sit down and have a conversation, but here I can sit down and have a chat to one of my guests and hear about their stories. Okay, operations, confirmation. They're not just a number, they're not just a customer, they are a guest. They are coming into our home, into our space. They like to share their stories and they like to feel that they're important, which on here they are. Okay, Leroy, I'm pleased he's up on the pin. Let's go. It's a great way for people to escape their routine life. Some people are trapped in this little bubble and all of a sudden, bang. It's huge. You're leaving Adelaide and the next day you wake up and it's like the red outback desert, dust everywhere. Beautiful ghost gums, they light up like a bright light when the sun hits them. If you're heading into Catherine and it's, you know, 98% humidity and you've got these massive thunder clouds, as soon as you wake up you can feel it, you're like, yeah, we're in Catherine. Rolling hills of these beautiful flowers, purple and yellow. And it's those moments that stick in your head and stick in your mind. Day in, day out, day in, day out. Back and forth, back and forth. I wake up and there's kangaroos looking at me, you know, just looking in my window. You can look out on either side of the train and for as far as the eye can see, you've got the horizon. When there's clouds and the sun hits the clouds, it's just, it's just beautiful. So you've got blues, you've got purples, you've got these amazing oranges, but it's not just this one little ball, it's the whole sky. It is emotional for them and it, it is for us as well. We do get to form that friendship. And so when you have to say goodbye, you're like, oh, that was fun. <laughs> Let's keep going. <laughs>